Hello everyone, welcome to The Spaces uh, with Divi. Uh, I'm Renuk, uh, we've got Voice and Rob also with us today. Um, so as usual, what I'll do is like do a quick up, um, introduction to Divi and then uh, talk through what we're gonna cover today uh, and then get straight into it. Um, so for those who are listening to us later on and for those who are joining us for the first time, um, Divi, uh, since our inception in 2017, our focus has always been on making crypto and easy and accessible for everyone everywhere. Um, that's always been the main focus for us and all of our products such as our DV Wallet, DV DeFi, Staking Walls, they all kind of focus on that. So if you haven't had a chance, take a look later on. Um, you know, you can get through our socials onto those websites. Um, and over the last few spaces, we've been talking about our new roadmap and one of the key things we've been talking about is utility. So all throughout, even today, we'll talk about, you know, how utility becomes key part of uh, DB's focus. And again, as I've always said, uh, as we've always welcome, you know, ask any questions as we go along. So today we're gonna cover uh, immortal NFTs. So you've seen that over the last couple of days, we've been uh, sharing through emails and so our socials as well, um, a code update and also what's coming up in the future. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Voice. Hey, okay, so I should be live now. Took my mute off. Um, there is the update that has come for the desktop wallet uh, that came out uh, just a short while ago. So make sure again that you're completely updated. Some people have updated. Um, and then th they did a partial update, meaning that usually their Windows system will have some sort of... Um, I don't know. It just Windows is always problematic. Um, it will update the daemon only, or it will update the desktop only. And so you need to make sure that if that happens, you most likely, not always, but most likely have a very, very old version. Um, that means below 194, probably 192 or below that. And that means you've been missing out on a lot of good things. So make sure that if you know somebody who has problems with updating mismatched, uh, they can just go right to diviproject.org forward slash downloads. And uh, they can go ahead and get the, um, the full install there. They simply just need to shut down their desktop reinstall or install over the top the new version um, if they have any issues with the daemon they can go into settings and then maintenance and then just click update daemon so if they have any problems with that um, the other thing that you may have noticed uh, some of you who watch is the updates that have been happening to the core that's the foundation's open source blockchain core um, there has been many 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 thousands of commits and that means that's the hard work that um, random string um, has put into the work on that that's a lot of hours for him a lot of uh, back and forth a lot of sore fingers sore wrists <laughs> just blood sweat and tears going into the continuation of the core and the implementation of the features and functions that will lay the groundwork for Divi 3.0. Uh, so some of you will see that in the GitHub repo that's coming out. Um, there's also been a ton of updates uh, with the Divi mobile wallet and will continue, of course, with the Divi mobile wallet. Every single week there will be something that the team is working on. And then those things will be released into the community. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of work going on. Everybody's got their nose to the grindstone. There's, there's never been a moment that there's been just a rest. It's just constant um, action and work by the team. It's just amazing to see the productivity and the levels that have completely changed with the sort of the revision of the team thousands of percent of increase in productivity in some cases so we'll start seeing those things come to fruition so in your divi mobile wallet you know just make sure you pay attention to those updates as they come through um if you have an iphone you'll see a little yellow icon that will pop up and uh when you see that next to the icon that means you have an update if you have google play when you open up the play app it'll tell you what kind of updates you need if you ever have any questions about that you can just visit the stores themselves and the stores will tell you about updates for divi desktop if you have windows or mac you'll have an auto update feature and if you have any troubles with that a manual install over the top will of course rectify those situations and that's what i have for you right now on those 
updates. Lots of work going on. That's great. Thank you, boys. Do we have any questions on that? No, I think we, yeah, I think it's pretty clear. I mean, it's very straightforward. Thank you, guys. And also, we've got Nick on the uh, spaces today as well. So you know, prepare some questions for him uh, later on as well. Um, Rob, I think you also have an update on Dow as well. I do. Um, so uh, the Dow, as as we've mentioned many times, again, I'm just going to assume there's some new people here. We're trying to create a a, a governance organization, which is the you know is the Dow. Uh, for the foundation, it's going to be many steps. Uh, we are still very early in the process. We have kind of agreed upon, voted upon, like what the governance model looks like. It requires a- NFTs to participate. Um, but right now, while we're in this early stuff, it just simply requires one eDivi, you know, on the Ethereum blockchain. And all the voting happens on the Ethereum blockchain. If you want to get involved, and you should get involved. Uh, head into the Discord, look at the DAO section, and you can see inside, you can see our progression, but you can also see how to get involved. So heavily um, uh, um, request <laughs> uh, that, uh, that you join so, and, and help us out here. We have, we're discussing three things right now, but today, I just got back from a trip. Today, I'm going to put on the a simple one is a no brainer. There's a lot of um, attacks on DAOs right now. And I believe that putting uh, the one that we're discussing right now, which just demands that the DAO operates in a non custodial fashion, makes no promises about price increases, it doesn't have its own coin uh, or token. Um, and uh, so th- it's um, that's what we're voting on about the non custodial nature, nature about the DAO that it won't employ processes or require pe- or hold anybody's money. Um, it's a no brainer, but I think it should be put forward and, and just laid out. And again, for the future so that everybody knows, like if something is like, Hey, let's, let's get a pot and put it in these, this guy's like uh, control and, you know, we'll all own part of this new project. That's a, that's a no, no. Um, so it's, that's the key with, with this thing. I'm going to put it up for vote. Uh, it'll be a short vote uh, in terms of I think maybe I'll, uh, the voting period will be between today um, at midnight uh, to Wednesday uh, at midnight. So that's that one. Please, uh, if you're already signed up, please vote. If you're not signed up, please take the time after the spaces or before midnight Eastern uh, today to actually sign up. You just need to get a, uh, you know, a, a MetaMask wallet, get one, at least one eDivi in it, and then you, you sign up for the snapshot and you're good to go. Um, the other two things that we're discussing right now are the governance model that we're proposing requires that you have a way to uh, an NFT that allows you to propose and an NFT that allows you to vote. The way you get these NFTs are either by purchasing them or they're assigned to you if you run a vault. Uh, so if you're really participating in the, in the Divi ecosystem and you're running a vault, when we get the technical part of this set up, um, and you fill out a form or whatever, you will you will just be granted voting and proposing NFTs that are uh, affixed to the level of the amount of Divi that you are that you have in a vault. Uh, the vault won't matter whether it's uh, on uh, in the mobile wallet, the desktop wallet, or if you launch one yourself. Uh, just having a vault. <clears throat> is what will grant you the NFT. The NFT will last as long as that vault lasts, um, and then it will disappear. Um, so what we're voting on is basically how should those NFTs look? Um, so there have been a couple of uh, submissions. Um, I'm going to submit something later, uh, but but uh, I was really hoping uh, we could get the community to put some. I mean, if you want to go ahead onto one of the AI uh, graphic uh, AIs, go for it. Get on there. Put some prompts in that you think uh, would represent uh, Divi voting and proposing, or Divi and voting proposing. Get it in there. Uh, there's a form to fill out, so you can you can submit it. Uh, and I hope to I I hope to have lots of submissions. It'll be fun. Uh, and that's basically DAO for now. Awesome. Thank you so much. Can I can I just add one thing about the DAO? Of course. Okay. Um, we have many things that are actionables that everybody in the community needs to share. And that is the immortal NFT, which is the governance token that is honoring the masternode holders, right? So 
right now there is the uh, mortal NFT. There's a DAO um, proposal for that. There's a DAO proposal for the style of the NFT, but this NFT is specifically for masternodes. That means if you have a masternode, you do need to pay attention to that email you received a couple of days ago. That's uh, This is an actionable that happens between July 5th and July 16th. If you don't do this, you miss out on your governance token, which is the immortal token. All of you who do this um, and participate in this, that's the challenge. The challenge is for the community to get actionable on this. This will affect your governance vote, and it honors you as a masternode um, uh, um, master masternode owner or masternode participant, whatever you want to go, you know, you, you, you run a masternode. Um, so make sure that you get your, your, your NFT for that. There's an email again, check your email. If you have any questions, we can share that link for you. And maybe, um, maybe you can touch on how that immortal token will help them. That would probably totally. be something. Uh, yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. I totally forgot. So along with the uh, voting and proposing uh, NFTs I talked about that you get when you are uh, running a validator vault, or uh, there's also a, a methodology by which you can just buy them. Uh, none of this happens today, but that's the plan going forward. Um, this is a special one. Um, so yes. this is a, unlike those, the ones that you buy, they burn after you use them. And the ones that are uh, you know, attached to the validator uh, vaults, uh, those burn when the vault goes down. This one doesn't burn. Um, and it's yeah. transferable. So uh, if you participate in this little activity, um, then uh, with your master nodes, uh, you, it's basically standing up a new one. Um, or, you know, if you have an old one, take it down, stand up a new one within this time. Uh, leave it running during the time and uh, you will uh, be rewarded with one of these immortal. It doesn't burn and it's transferable um, and uh, uh, NFTs that allow you to participate in the DAO. Um, so this is for you. Uh, it's a uh, minimal amount of work on your, your part. Your part. Uh, it's how you get rewarded for running a master nodes for as long as they still exist. Uh, and so there's no actual... I mean, the only cost to you is a few minutes to take down what you have, put up your new one, and you'll you'll earn the new uh, the NFT that lets you be part of governance. Correct. So, so in the email, it states that uh, what you have to do is deploy a new master node during this time frame, or you redeploy, and the steps for redeploy are dismantle and then deploy again. That's that's the first step. So, deploy or redeploy, and then you visit the form to input the details of what you've just done. And then you will enter in an address um, for the ERC-721, which is in NFT. Um, and that is managed uh, by any sort of an Ethereum wallet that can handle NFTs, so such as MetaMask, um, my Ether wallet, and those are mobile available. And uh, so you need to do that too. So make sure that if you get this email, you act on it. If you don't act on it, it's gone. So after that date, it's over with. So only the few people, or hopefully all people who participate in that, get their special, special standing, special honoring of this immortal NFT. You deserve it, so you should work on it. Absolutely. Thank you both. Uh, and yeah, if you, if you haven't seen the email, or if you haven't seen any of the socials, uh, just head over to our dbproject.org forward slash blog, and it's the first article on the top. So you'll find it there as well. Um, Voice and Rob, do we have anything else before I hand over to Nick to give a quick update and say hello to everyone with his new profile photo? <laughs> I'm good. Uh, yeah, we're good. good. Oh, over to you, Nick. Hello. Welcome. Hey, guys. Thanks for the updates. Uh, lots of exciting stuff happening. Yes, this is my, this is actually a picture of me. This is just what happens after you've been in crypto for 10 years. <laughs> yeah. You resemble me in voice now. This, yeah, that's great. <laughs> Love it. I um, Now I'm glad to be able to join you guys. I've been, um, obviously I've missed a bunch of these and I, I try not to jump in unless I really have something I want to talk about as well. Try to highlight the, the community aspects of, of things um, by not being in here because I know a lot of the questions will come my way and, um, 
we don't always necessarily need to, to go that route. But today, uh, I'm happy to be here. Hope everyone's enjoying their week. Had a good fourth if you're in the U.S. and, and all that stuff. So um, one of the things that I get asked about a lot recently is what's going on in Dubai. Obviously, I, I've left the city for a couple of months. Uh, the summer months are really, really unbearably hot. And a lot of people leave the city. There's a lot of, um, you know, sort of sporadic meetings and stuff like that that you can get into. But mostly everyone is not there. Um, and it, it'll be when I get back in August, it'll be almost probably 130 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is horrendous. So, yeah, not many people there. Not much of a reason to be there. So I've taken the opportunity to go spend some time with family in the U.S. and and enjoy the non humid hotness <laughs> so uh, but that said lots of stuff is still happening over there uh, before i left i was meeting in the chamber of commerce and i think like there's an uh, there's a probably most people think of the chamber of commerce as like their local business center sort of thing um which is fair but you know the chamber of commerce of the united states is extremely uh, powerful, has a lot of influence, etc. The same as can be said about the Chamber of Commerce in Dubai. Despite the fact that Dubai is a city, um, the Emirates are in many ways their own countries, right? It's it's not dissimilar to like the European Union, right? It's all different countries. Um, it's somewhere in between the EU and the USA, right? <clears throat> it's united a bunch of lands, Emirates, but it's uh, they still have basically mandate their own rules. So the Chamber of Commerce in, in the UAE, or sorry, in Dubai is very, very powerful, even across the, the entire country, um, and mandates a couple of Emirates, not just Dubai. So we've been going there as a result of conversations that have been taking place for almost eight months now. Um, basically, I was brought into a conversation by a business partner of mine who has been a local of Dubai for uh, something like 30 years, and he basically introduced me to an idea um, and this is where sort of the rugby sevens came from. Um, but he introduced me to the, uh, a partner who was working on the rugby sevens, doing ticketing and things like that. And we kind of expanded the idea. Um, and we're looking at doing something a lot more broad than the rugby sevens alone. And it's just grown and grown and grown over time. A lot of people started to get interested in the concept and, I'm giving you high level information about what the concept is because there's still details to be worked out and I don't want to give, um, I don't want to give information that changes later is wrong, whatever. But essentially what it is, is, you know, providing a web three layer a service layer to enterprise, which is basically what Divi labs has been aiming to do for a long time. Right. Um, so this accelerates that process. And when I say accelerates, I don't mean that it's been fast. It's been actually like frustratingly slow, but it is what it is. You're dealing with a different different culture in Dubai, a different business culture. And <clears throat> of course, Ramadan happened and they just have a very particular way of doing business. It's very methodical. They have to build trust with you. There's a lot of meetings that have to happen with a lot of different people. Um, so one of our partners, one of our Emirati partners, you know, we're, we're getting into the sort of the nitty gritty, the details of what, what we want to do. And she says, okay, well, we should, we need to meet with the Chamber of Commerce because we need to understand, you know, what, what business activities will really be participating in and what kind of licensure that will require in the region, um, especially if this is going to be ultimately a global operation, right? Of course, it starts locally <clears throat> and expands globally. So I've been to the Chamber three, three or four times now, um, meeting with different in individuals groups of people um, and different departments, ensuring that everyone's on the same page. Then eventually legal teams were brought in so that we can fully understand. And I mean, we're talking about, of course, local law, but also international law. So it's a very specific type of lawyer. I've learned so much about everything uh, pertaining to <laughs> the, the law, both, both within that region and, and how things happen globally, like how some of these big tech companies are operating globally and, and how their licensure expands across, you know, a variety of jurisdictions. Uh, but that's maybe a discussion for another time. Um, so as, as I 
left the country, um, there were still ongoing discussions and, and some things have moved forward. Um, some things have also moved slower. One of the cool things that happened is essentially, and, and this actually, this frustrated me initially, but then I realized how impactful this was going to be. Um, so in another meeting with the chamber that I did not uh, in, attend, but our partners were in, essentially the chamber of commerce was like, okay, we hear what you're trying to do. We need to bring in the department of economy and tourism. Um, so they've been brought in. Of course, that slows things down. Uh, Eid happened just recently, but this is important because now we're having additional, um, or now we've had, I should say, additional three-letter agencies come in from different departments throughout the economy in the country. And this enables us to do things. Ultimately, once it's all complete, all actually down and inked on paper, we're able to move much quicker and legally and expand a lot faster than the people that will come in and not have these connections. I think also the, the connection to these departments um, allows us to flow through opportunities like uh, funding opportunities and things like that, that will come as, as a result of our partnership with the chamber um, and these other, other departments. So um, I just got an update yesterday and it sounds like <clears throat> most of the, most of the sort of discussions have been finalized. Um, it's just a matter now of actually establishing company, which has been kind of a nightmare because you have to have an Arabic name as well as a <laughs> English name and getting that approved. We've been you have to have 20. an Arabic name too? Correct. You have to have an Arabic name for the company. So it's that has to be approved. Just like, you know, if you've ever set up an LLC in the US or in your in your city or whatever, um, if somebody else has your name within your industry already, you can't use the name, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's easy enough because you speak English. <laughs> so trying to figure out how to have both the word in English and in Arabic and not have it not be taken already is is difficult. So um, we've, we've been through like 20 iterations already of different names. Thankfully we have two Emirati partners on the team that have been helping with the translations, but yeah. So um, would you, would you kindly, would you, would you describe this, this relationship, this elbow rubbing and all these kinds of things like, um, and, and I, I, it does, I don't mean it to sound dismissive in any way, but like uh, dating almost you're, you're, you're courting people and, these partnerships are a courting style relationship. Um, and y the signing on the paper would kind of like being marriage almost in a way. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot That's of work. Exactly I would right. imagine. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's actually a good analogy. The, the way they do business there is I imagine similar to the way business was done in the United States, like 20 or 30 years ago, lots of handshakes, lots of in-person meetings, um, and lots of relationship building before, the marriage is, is consummated, so to speak. The process can be, um, can be a bit frustrating, like I said. But the thing is, you know, they are very protective of their culture and they're very protective of their money. Uh, a lot of people come to Dubai looking for investment, looking to set up companies and looking to commit crime, um, frankly. And they want to make sure that that's not what you're doing right so so it's all about relationships and, and you have to 100%. on on that on that moment where you're building those connections you're trying to discern whether or not people are a scammers but they're also the good ones are also trying to see whether or not you're a scammer too i would imagine so it's, it takes a lot of relationship building exactly and and it's yeah. happened i mean even especially within crypto you have a lot of people that have gone to dubai raised money on icos from big you know shakes and and people that are very important in the country and screwed them over. So, and it's hard to, it's hard to pursue those things. You kind of just write it off. So they want to make sure that that's not what's happening here. doesn't help okay. either that, that our industry had consistently disappoints. Um, and, you know, we had Luna and Celsius and BlockFi and FTX and all the others that had even atomic wallet recently that have just, whether due to oversight or, um, lack of <laughs> lack of uh, ethics crumbled. Um, yeah. So when you go into a, a conversation as a professional and you're trying to make a good impression, uh, you, you're still you have sort of this black cloud following you, whether you like it or not. Um, so to brighten that up and to to 
bring the sunlight out. Uh, it does take some time and it's, it's not easy. Um, but we're getting there. And that's, that's, what's very exciting is like when this is done. And, and I've, I've heard this from everybody we've spoken to, um, across the board about this project. Um, five words. How do I get in every time? How do I, how do I help? How do I get involved? This is, uh, it's going to have such a large impact because there's no one that's actually from an infrastructure perspective, from a regulatory perspective, there's no one that's actually um, equipped to solve the problems and, and innovate in the way that we're about to be able to um, even, you know, your finances, your crypto.coms, et cetera, they have licensure to do exchange, you know, uh, activities, but they don't necessarily, they're not infrastructure players. They're not wallet providers necessarily. Binance has trust wallet. Crypto.com has their DeFi wallet, but that's not their primary focus, right? Um, and they're more so consumer apps. While we do have a consumer-facing app, um, you know, our, our pivot, our sort of new direction into B2B, at least from from the Divi Lab side, is, uh, is unique, I think, in the industry. And it's it has been an uphill battle, for sure. Um, but now that like the, the wallet has, has been updated and it continues to be updated, it's feeling a lot smoother and there's a lot of infrastructural changes that innate, that will enable uh, more business to business friendly activities. That's, you know, the whole team is moving in lockstep, even though it may seem, I don't know. I don't know what it seems like to people, but uh, you know, I'm just maybe too close to the situation. I see a lot of stuff happening. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> Thank you so much for that share. I think that was awesome. Um, I th I think it's good that you 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 um, confirm my opinion that it's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of um, rubbing elbows and it's a lot of uh, shaking hands. And so I think that's that's probably what it's hard for me to imagine because I'm in the fire as Rob is in the fire or any of us are in the fire. It's a completely different fire that you're in. And uh, and I have no idea what it's like to go out and um, try to sit down with people over hours and 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 essentially you're selling an idea, right? And if it's interesting to them and how you can help solve those problems, I think that's totally awesome. Uh, did, Renuk, did we have any questions? Nope, we haven't had any questions come through. But if anybody's got any, any questions, questions, put their hands up now. Oh yeah, we've got one. Oh, oh. I think Rob had job dropped out. <laughs> Rob dropped? No, Rob's back. There he is. He's back. Does anybody else have any questions for Nick? Um, I'm in a thunderstorm and my internet seems to be going in and out. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. Uh, yeah, I don't think we've got any questions. So, Nick, thank you so much for sharing all of that. I know, I mean, being on that journey it's beautiful. with you, <laughs> we know how we could be, but we keep pushing. <laughs> Um, Appreciate you guys. Right, I think uh, that pretty much wraps it up for the week. Uh, hey, I want to just remind everybody. I'm just interjecting here. I see Chaos Cube is in the community. For those people who want to, um, what do you call them? Minting or whatever you call you can you can spawn. I don't know what Chaos Cube called it now. Forgive me for not remembering. But you can use eDivi. I think is uh, the big point on that. So you can go ahead and uh, summon. That's what he called it. Summon your Chaos Cube. So for those of you who like those fun NFTs that uh, Chaos Cube is producing, you can use eDivi for that now. So Brilliant. Anyway. Thank you, boys. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. And see you all next week. Have a good weekend. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. Cheers.